The enhancement of the functionality to be able to create custom symbols in MetaTrader, specifically MT5, is a really great addition to the platform. However, the value of this is often underestimated by many traders. In today's episode, I'll take you through why they're so useful and also show you step by step how to create them. A few weeks ago, I received a comment from someone on one of my videos, and I hope I pronounce his name correctly. It was Massimiliano, and he asked if I could do a video on custom symbols, and here it is. So remember, if you have anything that you'd like me to put a video together about, then please do the same and ask in the comments below. And if that would be of value to people and I know about the subject, then I'll do the same for you. And so because of that, today I'll be talking about custom symbols, which, as I said, are a really powerful addition to the MetaTrader platform. So let's take a closer look. So firstly, let's cover the basics of what a custom financial symbol actually is. And in fact, there are two types, and these are quite different from each other. The first of these allows you to import third party data into the custom symbol. And the second is called a calculated or synthetic custom symbol. And with this second option, you don't need to import any data at all. All of the data is calculated real time based on the price streams of other assets that are provided by your broker. And once these have been set up, they'll create quotes just like any other symbol that you get from your broker. So let's first cover the data import option. There are two options for importing your data. The first is from a text file, and that text file can be based on either M1 OHLC data or tick data, depending on your preference. And this option is most applicable when you're sourcing your data from a third party provider. The second type of file that can be imported is a MetaTrader history file. And so this is most appropriate when you're transferring data from one MetaTrader instance to another, and in particular from one broker into another broker's MetaTrader instance. I'm not going to cover in great detail what the format of those files needs to be, but if you use this URL, this will give you all of the information you need. But also, I will be showing you in a moment, step by step, a demo of how to go through this process. But first of all, let's look at why you would use this type of custom symbol. If you wanted to perform some technical analysis based on a chart that you can add indicators to, or if you want to perform some backtesting and optimization, but you feel that your broker doesn't provide a sufficient duration or maybe the quality of the data doesn't meet your requirements, then this is where a custom symbol comes in because it enables you to source data that does meet your requirements and import that into the MetaTrader platform. Equally, it might be that your broker simply doesn't provide a particular symbol that you want to investigate or to backtest. And so again, this offers a solution there. Now, the third reason is if you want to use synthetically generated data. And this isn't something that I personally do, but I am aware that there's a lot of traders out there that do produce synthetic data in order to assist them with their backtesting. And the fourth reason is if you want to perform some kind of data pre-processing on price data. So maybe cleansing that data or making it backtest ready. So now let's take a look at where these data import custom symbols can be used within the platform. Firstly, you can open charts of these symbols just in the same way you can with any standard symbol from your broker. Bear in mind though, of course, that these don't automatically update and you would need to re-import more recent data in order to get that. 
Likewise, you can backtest in the strategy tester against these custom symbols. But note that because these don't get updated real time, you can't use them in your live EA. Now it's worth noting that this last limitation I speak about here is not a problem for the calculated symbols, as you'll see later in the episode. Okay, so let's now get into the detail and take a look at this. So the first step in creating a custom symbol is to open the symbol manager, which you can see here. Next, you need to click on create custom symbol, which is the button at the bottom. Now this next step is really important. If you're creating a custom symbol that's based on a symbol that your broker already provides, then you must select that symbol from the copy from dropdown that you see here. And what this will do is ensure that all of the metadata for the symbol is set appropriately. So in this example, I'm going to import data for Euro dollar. So if I select the Euro dollar symbol here, you'll notice that all of the information and the metadata is set appropriately for that including the margin currency, the profit currency, which are used to perform calculations behind the scenes when you backtest this particular symbol. So in order to get accurate results, you must do this. It also identifies the type of the symbol. So in this case, it's Forex, the number of digits, how information is displayed on charts, so by bid price, for example. And there's also lots of information about when the symbol can be traded, the hours of the day, how swap is calculated, and so on. Now, after copying this metadata in, you can change it if you need to, but usually using the broker settings is the best approach. But for example, if I wanted to change the hours that this symbol can be traded, I can do that fairly easily by selecting that from the dialogue window you see here. But for now, I'll leave it as it is. We now need to give our custom symbol a unique name. Now it's always good practice to keep the original broker name, but then add a postfix for that. So I'm going to call this eurodollar.custom and then click on OK. So now you'll see in the symbol tree on the left, under the custom folder and Forex, we can now see our new custom symbol here. And if we double click on that, this will now display in the market watch window. So now we've got our symbol set up, we now need to import our data. So with the symbol selected, you can either click on the bars tab or the ticks tab, depending on the type of data you're going to import. I'm going to import M1 OHLC data, so I need the bars tab, and then I need to select import bars from the bottom, browse, select the file that I want to import, which is a CSV file, and you now need to check that the data is displayed correctly in the dialog. As I said before, there's a specific format that you need to make sure your data is in. And if you remember, I gave you a URL where you could check that. So if you're happy, you can now click on OK and our data is displayed in the window. Click OK again, and we can see our new custom symbol here in the market watch. You'll notice it doesn't have a real time price feed coming through like the other symbols for the reasons I explained earlier on but I can now open up a chart and you can apply indicators in exactly the same way as you can for any other symbol. Equally, in the strategy tester, this symbol will now be selectable from the drop-down there. So hopefully you found that useful. It does start to get a little bit more interesting when we look at the next type of custom symbol, which is that of the calculated or synthetic type. So click top right now to go to the next part.